can add my name. I will totally copy you in, John. Oh, yeah, thanks. Welcome, folks, to the well, we're squeaking one more in in May. This is the 31st of May 2023 Aries Working Group call. Um, and today we're going to talk. This is a uh, important conversation, um, but um, uh, as it relates to the open wallet conversation, but uh, but mildly peripheral, we're anticipating a presentation from them next week um, on more of a formal proposal. Um, and so today is a little bit of background stuff that came out of last week's conversation about what um, about what exactly Aries is, et cetera. And I think that the, we'll have some sort of good general conversation today, uh, but without necessarily pressure of evaluating a, a, a specific proposal. And that will provide some useful conversation for, for further uh, topics we'll have. Um, so thank you for coming. This is a Hyperledger call. So the antitrust policy and the code of conduct are in effect. Please be mindful of those and please raise any concerns you have either to uh, Stephen Kern or I, or to uh, Hyperledger uh, leadership generally, and we can get those things uh, corrected. Um, you're welcome to uh, add yourself to the attendees list now that I finally published the page. Um, again, the link is in the group or is in the, the Zoom chat uh, for the link to today's agenda. Um, is, is anyone uh, would is anyone here new or would otherwise like to introduce themselves to the group before we get going? Uh, Alex, your hands up. Was that for that or something else? It was for that, yeah. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, Alex Metcalf um, here with the Governor of British Columbia. Um, John has brought me in. I do a lot of communications and marketing work, and I'm going to contribute some time towards the uh, the great ship that is Aries. And um, I think there's many aspects I could help with um, with a chunk of time I've got from summarizing and having a perspective on the decision around the Open Wallet Foundation through to how we better communicate the benefits of what we do to people coming into it at various levels. So happy to help out, happy to be here, and I'll just listen mostly for today and be catching up a lot, but I may have some questions ongoing. Uh, fantastic. I also want to um, give a nod here to Helen and Tim. Um, uh, to Tim and, and Helen work for DCO, but he Helen also serves as the uh, marketing chair, Helen, I'm getting, if I'm getting that right, of, the, of Hyperledger? Yeah, I was elected the Hyperledger marketing chair by the membership. So I represent um, the sort of dues paying members uh, who are part of the foundation and um, help support the, yeah, overall kind of, you know, guide the ship along with Ben, who is on the call, who is actually the Hyperledger uh, uh, communications staff person in charge of all things marketing. Um, so, hey, Ben, I'll, you can introduce yourself as well. <laughs> yeah, Ben, you did have your hand up. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump the queue there. Oh, not at all. No worries. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I actually, sorry, I didn't realize you were on the call, Helen. And um, yes, I'm Ben Thomas. I run Marketing and Communications for Hyperledger Foundation. And Helen kindly asked me to join the call today to answer any questions uh, in relation to uh, Hyperledger Aries branding and possibly provide uh, an update on the developments of a, a new brand that we're rolling out soon and a new website. Uh, yes, and so the reason I wanted to sort of call that out was uh, I. this is normally, of course, a developer focus group, um, but um, I appreciate those with, uh, with other skills that clearly we need um that uh that are are around and involved and knowledgeable and all those things and so uh hats off to to those of you who are uh looking to assist and make our work more visible and approachable um and, and so i i super appreciate that excellent uh, others that would like to introduce themselves okay um, appreciate everyone being here. Um, on the announcements we have uh, coming up in like next week, I believe, is the is the Dice Europe. Did I do that right? Um, yes, this is next week, uh, in, uh, Dice Europe, and then we have the the uh, the, the hackathon and the non creds workshop, which is today actually. Um, and and pr is this 8 a.m. Mountain? Is there's maybe a reason that Stephen's not here if uh, if that is going Pacific, on right I think. What's that? The Pacific. So th Pacific. this so this happens the hour following this one. Yeah. 
Excellent. So if you're looking for something to do in less than 60 minutes, then here's your link um, for an online creds workshop. Uh, any other announcements that we should have? Awesome. Um, I, uh, are there any uh, pressing release status or work update topics that folks want to float today? Wait, I'm, I'm uh, hoping to, to save as much time as we can for the main topic. Thank you for all the work that all the folks do. Uh, that's what keeps this everything alive and, and uh, it's, it's often under recognized even in this group. So we appreciate your work. Um, so this is a little messy. Uh, this is the um, this is the stuff that I'm adding at the top and I'm sort of cumulative with keeping some notes as it relates. And so uh, I uh, this is the, the relatively the new section of the agenda here with the other stuff brought along to sort of have the notes all in one spot without having to, to, to jump to five or six pages. Um, and so uh, what I wanted to do today was talk about uh, the terms wallet and uh, the term wallet and the term agent and how they interplay. And uh, and then uh, there's some a little bit of, of observation that I would like to share from my perspective about um, about uh, sort of focus of work. And I think that that will be helpful um, in, in a way to do that. Um, are there uh, are there other topics that we want to address prior to getting into this conversation? or in addition to getting into this conversation. Okay. Um, uh, I want to nod real quick and, and say that the uh, that they did peer one of the other conversations we've got going on is the uh, is is the the transition away from unqualified dids and there's um, uh, there uh, in that vein the did peer method three which is a short uh, more efficient version uh, that you can derive from a did peer method two um, has been merged into that spec so appreciate all the work being uh, that has been done there um, and uh, and that's good okay let me uh, tackle these actually slightly out of order um, let me talk about some observations that i have that i think are relevant to sort of the focus that we have as a group um, because uh, I think it's an interesting, um, there's some interesting color here that I don't know exactly what to conclude from, but it's something that I that has become really obvious to me over the past couple of months, um, and uh, and I'd love to share thoughts there, and then uh, and then we can have some more open conversation um, as it relates to things I got right or didn't get right in that in those observations, and uh, and then and then the term agent versus wallet. Um, which I don't really, uh, that's not intended to start an old argument for argument's sake, but rather to, to talk about uh, kind of what, um, what the terms mean uh, as, as a way of, of exploring sort of the scope and the meaning of the work that we are engaged in. Um, and so, uh, okay, let's charge ahead. And if, we, and if anyone has suggestions on how to modify the agenda or topics to do, then I, I appreciate those uh, all along. Um, so sometimes these, uh, hopefully these conversations go in, in unexpected ways, which can help us with the understanding of, of what we've got going on. So um, first, let me talk a little bit about, uh, about focus. Um, the, I've, I've noticed uh, in the past little bit that um, even more starkly that there are uh, many participants in the larger um, decentralized identity SSI ecosystem that are very focused on verifiable credentials. Now, that shouldn't necessarily be surprising. Uh, verifiable credentials are a really incredibly useful tool for uh, portable trust, um, for um, you know, reducing the cost of data integrations, um, all sorts of, of really useful things, um, and, uh, and, and the, the modified data flows to involve often people uh, in the center of it instead of at the periphery. There's some really good uh, behaviors um, that, are, that are brought on by, by VCs. But I've, I've noticed uh, most recently that there's a lot of uh, overfocus upon VCs, as in the sense that the verifiable credentials themselves are viewed as the end goal of our efforts, is that SSI is VCs and decentralized identity, uh, identity is VCs. And, uh, and that even to some degree that, um, although this is a way more controversial, that, that, uh, that DIDs are useful for VCs, um, but uh, but less useful uh, for for other things, and um, 
this community, but specifically, I mean the the Aries community has always, uh, in my mind, had a little bit of a different view here. And maybe I'm reading this wrong, um, but it has been a little bit more about what happens because of verifiable credentials, because we have these abilities, than necessarily the delivery of the actual technology itself. And and this is important because um, it, it, in, it influences choices of technology and and where uh, work effort is placed, um, and that uh, and that has an effect upon the projects that we actually have. Um, Didcom's a large differentiator here in the sense that um, Didcom was was is not was never designed to be VC centric in that um, in that VCs are either a a required thing or that Didcom was created for VCs alone, but rather as a uh, a more general uh, meta protocol that allows two parties with DIDs to communicate with each other. And one of the really useful things to do is use credentials, of course, in that communication. But um, and and credentials can add uh, trust to to that relationship. But the the actual existence of the communication channel allows for so much more. And we've had some demonstration of that. Um, not uh, not as much as I as I uh, as I think we we have coming. But uh, but we have protocols that don't necessarily have anything to do with verifiable credentials, but happen over that same uh, over that same uh, channel, and and this is uh, something that is interesting to me because um, it differentiates uh, the the work at least as I see it um, as a qualifier there I, I I don't claim to see everything perfectly um, a, a differentiator between the work that we have been long engaged in and then uh, and then a variety of other protocols. Um, and when I speak of other protocols, I need to be careful here in the sense that um, when I talk about what I see as the advantages of Didcom, I'm in no way proposing that we don't support other protocols that are more focused on verifiable credentials. But I wanted to highlight the fact that the reason we care about Didcom and, uh, and sort of the patterns that we've been developing is, in fact, because there are advantages that uh, th these other protocols uh, didn't didn't have. We, they were not really born here or, or whatever else because we've had a focus on, on some things that are that are a little bit more powerful from that perspective. And here's an example, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm really not trying to throw shade here, just to make an observation, and I think that they would agree with this. The OpenID for VCI and VP, uh, the OpenID related credential protocols, um, are effective at passing uh, credential information. Um, and that's what they're designed to do. They're very narrowly designed to do that, um, which means that to some degree, there's a lot of uh, other details or other complications uh, you might argue that can be left out because they're only focused on uh, credentials um, as a as a specific task that they have in front of them. Um, Didcom is often conflated with the, uh, a specific uh, protocol in Didcom, often the, the credential issuance and presentation protocols inside of Didcom because that's the lens by which people are sort of looking through this, meaning the VC lens causes them to sort of see Didcom only as a, as a, as a method to, uh, to, to move verifiable credentials. Um, in the larger world, one of the things that was really obvious to me at the European Identity Conference this year was that the uh, number one, uh, decentralized identity and SSI have become sort of the hot topic, the very hot topic. The uh, year before it was mentioned, um, but, uh, but it was the hot topic this year. And uh, but but the, as a result of that, there's uh, there's a, a massive focus on on verifiable credentials very specifically, and um, uh, and 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 specifically protocols that are designed to do that. And it, and it has occurred to me that um, that Didcom itself, I don't think, is very well understood for what it actually offers in contrast to what the other protocols actually provide. And uh, this is a little wordy, but I'm I'm hoping to convey that. At least in my view, a long, um, a long goal that we have been pursuing is for the engagement of a variety of activities um, related to uh, decentralized identity, uh, um, among which v verifiable credentials are an important piece, but only one important piece uh, in, the, in the presence of others that, uh, that enable this larger ecosystem to work in a really powerful way. And so it, that's one of the, I, that, that was not obvious to me, and maybe it's obvious to everyone else, and I apologize if so for, for taking up your time, uh, that, that there are sort of major um, priority differences or major fundamental differences between the work that we've been, been pursuing and how we see things and the work as it's, uh, you know, in, in the other related work in SSI that has, has been focused on inside of other communities. And 
that that was that was very interesting to me. The the other also uh, possibly unrelated thing here is that um, this community uh, possibly just historically also grew up with more of a of a focus and an attention on uh, on on trying to you know maintain privacy as much as possible. And so there there tends to be an affinity um, within uh, within areas for. Uh, for credential types that do that, though certainly we have support for credential types that, that, that don't have all of those same features and are supported in our software. But 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 there's certainly an external perception that, that we're that we're very focused on that. Um, and I wouldn't say it's necessarily incorrect that there is a lot of affinity within this group, perhaps more than there is outside of this group uh, for those technologies. And I don't um, I don't know if that's uh, unrelated, but only historical. Um, but it's another observation that I have is that that te that has tended to be an affinity. Um, of how this is done. Um, and so anyway, those are some observations that I have, and I hope those are useful and can, uh, and can help inform our, our discussion um, as we get into really talking about the difference um, in approaches uh, that we have and partially what makes Aries unique. There are other software projects that, that are, have, uh, are not inside of Aries um, that are in this space. Um, and, and I think that, uh, I think that Aries has something uh, important um, and, uh, and, and I think it's important to recognize the valuable bits that we have that we want to preserve so that we, as we discuss options moving forward, it's a little bit easier to compare sort of that, uh, having some clarity around that with, you know, with what we have, um, with the options that we have in front of us. So I apologize for soapboxing just a minute, um, but I hope that that provides some, some useful context there. Um, any thoughts before we uh, dive into the agent versus wallet term? discussion. I have a dumb question, uh, or maybe a naive question. Um, aside from OpenID, uh, what are there? Are there any other communities that uh, uh, one thing? I'll, one thing that drew me to Aries originally was that uh, because because this group works on the whole stack uh, from low level stuff all the way up to high high level, you know, usability kind of things. It, it seems like this community ships the most you know, usable tools. Uh, so other than open ID, which, you know, that seems pretty, pretty mature. What other community are there? What are the other communities and, and that are focusing on VCs? Well, from a protocol perspective, there are two main other ones. Um, one is the Chappie community. Uh, Chappie is the credential handler API inside of browsers mm -hmm. um, that is designed for sort of browser to browser interaction or br browser tab to browser tab, if you will. Um, as it relates to wallets. So this is uh, very much focused on on the uh, browser oriented wallet and wallet support. Um, the other one is the uh, is the collection of VC HTTP APIs that take an API centric approach on um, on on how the, the interactions both within a user's sort of uh, uh, domain and and then between parties um, should should occur. And so those tend to be the other two. Um, those are a little bit more focused on the on the W3C as sort of a, a nexus of where those conversations actually happen. Well, um, and that's, that's where the comparison gets fuzzy is like those only do like a part of what thing areas different areas protocols do in the wider, you know, idealized scheme, right? Um, so you, you're, you're making a point here that, uh, that this community tends to focus on a, on a larger vertical piece of the stack, which ironically has gotten us in trouble in some <coughs> views because um, they feel like we're not, uh, we're not making things piecemeal enough as we design stuff. Um, right. Well, in, in, defense of, in defense of y'all, that's why it seems like this group produces the most usable things <laughs> is because, you know, uh, Focusing on little piecemeal parts, uh, those those groups seem to advance much slower uh, and, and run into more trouble because they don't, <laughs> you know, focus on the whole stack. That's my opinion, though, uh, naive, very naive uh, opinion. I, I don't think it's super naive, uh, and I think that that started from the beginning. So there's a number of things that have spun out of Aries. Uh, the most obvious one is is Didcom. There's some uh, interest uh, externally and and. Um, and, and made that happen. Oh, I didn't mention decentralized web nodes. Um, so yeah, the web, th thanks Alex. Um, the, the, uh, the decentralized web nodes, DWNs, uh, uh, Square is behind that. There was some Microsoft involvement. I don't know if there is any more yet uh, or if there's any more, but um, decentralized web nodes are another concept that is more storage oriented than necessarily communication oriented. 
Um, but uh, there's some interesting bits there too. In, in none of these are exact replacements of, re, uh, of each other or necessarily uh, you have to choose one or the other, but naturally most groups have tended to sort of prioritize the development of, of some protocols over others um, in the inability to have infinite resources to make stuff happen. Um, I also have to highlight um, some, some really good work being done. Um, so the, the Aries Framework Go community a long time ago was, was more focused on, on uh, sort of Aries, but, but without having anything to do with Indy. Um, I think it got some Indy support added later uh, by another party than the original developer. And then um, uh, AFJ has done uh, a lot of work um, integrating both additional credential types and additional protocols um, into the code base. So, um, so this is um, the, the mission of Aries was never really narrowly defined um, as being only sort of the protocols that we have uh, sort of ended up focusing on initially. Um, it, it sort of just happened that that's where the nexus of work has been. Um, so that's, a, sorry, a little bit of an aside, but stuff that I didn't say earlier that I should have. Um, Charles, I think, I think your point is good. Um, and I think that uh, we as a community produced sort of the, the you know, the, the earliest full stack working thing that was cross code compatible as a way to, to make that happen. Um, and and I, I think that's good. Um, I, uh, I think that, um, I yeah, think yeah, and that, it's that a, is. And it's a measure of success that things have spun off to become isolated, like DICOM can be its own thing. I, I think that's a measure of success of the community uh, of what y'all have done because, you know, it seems like having an implementation and spinning off pieces that people can fit together seems easier than trying to make the pieces separate and then fit them together later. But that, that's like, an, that's an engineering opinion, uh, you know, cathedral versus bazaar, right? Um, yeah. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you, Charles. The floor is generally open. So Sam, it's John. Um, so I, I I agree, and that's uh, you know why I asked Alex here because we work on a lot of presentations and materials together, and when I talk to people now, I talk about um, you know what are we trying to accomplish, um, sorry, um, and you know we're trying to create the opportunities for people to communicate amongst themselves with government with businesses business to business you know and and have confidence that their digital relationships are confidential that they can exchange authentic data be it you know be it formal credentials just unstructured chat business documents or whatever the whole richness of relationship which is much more than just pulling a little thing out of your wallet or your filing cabinet to prove you're incorporated or whatever and that you have some measure of privacy controls um, those are the three qualities that we emphasize and from that you can build your you know the rich complex adaptive system that is your life or your business. Um, it's much more than just passing a, a token. And you know, the mental model behind that is access control. So there's a lot more to life than access to a system. Um, so that's kind of, I think, some of the messages we need to bring to the top. Thank you, John. wallet to wallet verification, you know, and, and that is a like, stark example of something that's different. One of the things that I would love to see more, I, I think lots of us share this view, but it's not just important for institutions to verify the information of people but for people to be able to verify the information you know, of, of other people but also institutions. And, uh, and I think that verifiable credentials are often looked at the other way, where, you know, the holders are the people that have them, but the other people are the verifiers. And I, uh, I yearn for and envision an ecosystem where uh, everyone is a verifier in, um, in, in some uh, sense uh, in, during their transactions. 
um, and, uh, and, and that allows for the mutual trust to be, to be built up um, that is necessary rather than sort of mimicking today's world where, um, where SSL certificates, uh, you know, TLS certificates and, and client side certificates both exist, but client side uh, certificates and practicality don't really exist. Um, and so I, I or, or they, they exist, but they're not ever used. And, and, I, and I think that we can do better in that sense. And so being able to verify from the mobile side, not because you're a special institution, but simply because you're a person who wants to verify credentials, I think is really important. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's important potentially for, you know, people and communities like, like I'm, you know, disabled and I have people come to help me. Sometimes it might be nice if somebody could be here to verify they're actually a care worker from the health authority or other kinds of help. Or just allow you to, obviously with some device help, but the, yeah. but the fact that, that, uh, that you could receive a, a presentation uh, from them would be, would be incredibly powerful. Other thoughts? Um, let's move into the, the, the wallet versus agent term discussion. Um, we have long called them Aries agents, not necessarily Aries wallets, but are the more recent move into sort of a stronger um, mobile answer um, from the Aries community has, has invoked the term wallet again. And a lot of time has passed. And so I, I think it's worth talking about this. Um, the, the term uh, wallet traditionally inside of the Aries community, and I say traditionally because I do not believe this is universal use now, has referred to the actual sort of key storage, key management, signing and encryption side of things. Um, and, um, and, and that could be translated, for example, to ASCAR um, as, a, as, as sort of the wallet that lives inside of the agent. Um, and so, and then agent has, has been described as the software that has a wallet, but that does other interesting things with it, right? Leverages the wallet uh, you know, on behalf of the user in order to, to provide interesting interactions. And that's the terms that we have used, um, but it's it's uh, messy because there's uh, all sorts of conversations happening all over the place to talk about that. Um, and so the term wallet has uh, has also come into common use, not just outside of Aries, but within Aries, as it refers to the um, to a an agent, but that exists on a mobile device. Um, and so there's there's a little bit of conflicting stuff here, and I'd love to sort of open up for people's thoughts or the terms that they have heard in use, or the things that are the terms that they feel are most relevant or or mean the the right thing in the right context. Who has opinions about terms? Can I ask what's the framing of the conversation? Has this come up as a concern? Is there a reason to choose one over the other? I don't know that it's been concerned necessarily, but there has been a um, sort of an ambiguity there um, as it relates to our conversation. And so the reason I'm trying to draw this out today is not necessarily because someone's proposing that we switch terms exactly, but that I think that having this conversation will help highlight what we, uh, Aries, you know, uh, are and what we produce. Um, and, and, and I think some term clarity there will help us to message it more clearly to when in, in uh, conversations we both have internally and, and to, to other parties. Thank you. Ken, your hands up. Yeah, I wanted to emphasize the, the difference between agent and wallet, uh, particularly focused around some of the other protocols like question and answer or payment negotiation or any of the other uh, protocols that can be communicated between agents that aren't necessarily wallety things. Um, wallets do play an important part of that in establishing, you know, the identity of the person, the key management, and all that other um, fun and interesting stuff, and that associated around VCs and bids. But uh, some of the, the the behaviors and things that we're trying to incorporate in the Aries community involve more than just um, 
issuing a, a verifiable credential and, and verifying a verifiable credential. And so I think that the, the term agent is broader and encapsulates those much better than just a, a wallet concept. This is Mike. Uh, Ken and I are sharing an office. That's why my audio looks like Ken's audio or, or vice versa. Um, just to tack on to that thought, uh, I've had conversations with customers where they're like, what's the difference? And you know, your app only offers wallet functionality, you know, so it, it only holds credentials or whatever. So why do you call it an agent? And so I think that also highlights the necessity of having some demos and some use cases that utilize those other protocols and functionality so that when we draw the distinction between a wallet and an agent, people will say, oh, uh, you know, the wallet is for these purposes and the agent can do more. Whereas right now, a lot of the demos and use cases don't utilize anything beyond what looks like a wallet. And that's part of the reason I think for the confusion is that the agents aren't doing a lot of things that aren't very wallet-like at the moment. Got a thumbs up from Alex on that one. Uh, Steve, your hands up. Yeah, I, I enjoyed those thoughts. I'd like to um, second them. Um, a lot of times we, at least with the people I talk to, um, we, we look at a wallet as an app. So the Apple wallet, the Google wallet. And, and that's the main purpose of the app is being a wallet. The, the other side is, that leads more towards the agent side, which is I think where we're, most of us are gonna end up is that we create an app that has wallet functionality. And so the app does whatever it does, whatever you made the app for, and then it needs to exchange verifiable credentials and, and verify them and hold them and, and assert them and all that kind of good stuff. And so there's, you know, when, when we talk about, this kind of came into my mind a little more when we talk about um, rules and verifications and such that wallets need to adhere to. And in my way of thinking, a wallet oftentimes will be part of an app. And so what we're talking about is constraints on app design. And that's, that's a, a nuance I think all of us need to ponder is, is what is it exactly we're, we're building? Are we all building wallets? Are we building apps that have wallet and agent-like functionality as part of their purpose? Um, just thought I'd throw that out there. Steve, when you're talking, um, the, um, you know, you said, what's well, the purpose of the app, right? I'm paraphrasing. And, and, I, and I thought, we don't call them uh, TLS engagement applications. We call them web browsers because the purpose is to browse the web and they engage in TLS behaviors as a, as a useful aspect of doing so. But it's not about the TLS, it's about the web. And I think what you were saying is that, uh, if I understood you right, is that we we ought to be thinking about what the app is actually doing, rather than the method by which it's doing so, um, and and that may help clarify. Did did I understand you right, Steve? Yeah, that's that's exactly exactly it. Um, uh, just well, exactly that. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Uh, and, and <laughs> I'm trying to be thought. brief and and not just um, go on. So you you got it right. Thank you. Awesome, Alex, your hands up. Yeah, a few thoughts. Um, there's a bit of it depends. I think that when we're talking to people outside of our immediate sphere, if you're coming fresh to this, a wallet is a much stronger term. Wallet is a very obvious concept from the physical world; everyone gets it. But agent, if you're not in the tech space, doesn't mean much. You think secret agent, you know, 007 stuff. So I think it's important to think about the words as they might be received from outside this. And I think that a wallet with extra capabilities um, is more understandable because, okay, it's a wallet that holds things, but also you can do more things because of the things it holds or whatever the, the way of approach might be. But just say that the wallet is a more approachable concept than agent if you're starting from, say, um, more senior decision makers or people outside this area. And I think that lends itself to another thought, which isn't directly on this, but it's something I've been pondering for the last, for the last while is um, 
the, all these capabilities, all this potential um, is realized through take up and traction and use. And what's most approachable to people I see often personally uh, and that people can really get is around wallets, the idea of a wallet and identifying yourself and credentials. It's very tangible. There's a land grab that comes from that. I think that's the starting point is that this gets adoption through people wanting to be able to hold things. And then the extra capabilities are realized on top after that. But if you're not there first, you can have all this potential where it could be, but then you miss out to, you know, a good enough solution that gets the most traction worldwide. And that's the ball game. And then they can extend it whichever way they wish because they've got the actual buy-in from various people. So for all those reasons of this discussion, I think um, external comms beyond what we know it can do, I think wallet is broadly a stronger term. Yeah, I think, I think I've mentioned this before, like, you know, the word phone changed what it meant changed, you know, somewhere around, well, in particular in 2007 when the iPhone was released. I mean, the iPhone has a phone app. It's not quite recursive, but okay. Um, so, you know, it, it's something that people identify with and then you show them more. So um, a couple of our team, user experience team went out to a small town and, you know, and did some user testing in the wild with mobile verification. I don't think I heard back that people said, well, why is a wallet doing this? They just enjoyed the ability to communicate and, and exchange, you know, like what we would call do proofs. But imagine you go to rent, uh, you know, an apartment and you could create a connection and exchange proofs of things right there in a chat function. And, and you know, that's a rich conversation that just happens peer to peer. That's happening with your wallet app, but who cares what it's called? Just made me able to do something. It was important. Yeah, if I can jump on the back of that, um, to what John said and what I said before, the use case, the real world value is what draws people in. So when you can do stuff, they don't really care about what's below it. So starting with what's really obvious and they can get and it's doing something they need to do, and then we can build on top and provide more features. However it gets there, the terms we use is almost by the by if we're answering real world problems as well. Well, and combined with the, with the, well, essentially the promise, but you can expect it that this, this, this wallet provides you with some um, promises, which is that your interactions are confidential, that the exchanges are authentic data in different ways. Even if they're chat, they're happening through a confidential channel where you may be already convinced yourself you know who the other party is formally or not you know so that there's a set of promises that that differentiate back to your original topic sam that this you know this these wallets are for for you not for large data aggregators and you know and, and big tech And the other part, which we always, again, speaking of myopic, you know, personal wallets are like, okay and important, but there's a vast market opportunity with business to business interactions where they need the same kinds of guarantees, confidentiality, authentic data. Um, they're, you know, that's a, that's a huge market where everybody's kind of enamored with the fancy little app on the phone, but organizations need these capabilities. Um, standard disclaimer about my notes. You please uh, jump in and correct or add or other things that I miss. I am intending to take notes as sort of clearly and concisely as I can, but I'm going to do a poor job. So, um, so please, uh, please jump in if I, if I do a poor job of something. Um, 
Uh, thank you, John, for, for that conversation. There's a couple things that I pulled out of there. Um, Mike, can I pick on you a little bit to talk about your comment in the chat? He's either looking for the mute button or has decided no. <laughs> That's okay. He's getting lots of thumbs up. He said, wallet is broadly is better understood, but will eventually be limiting. Agent is going to get co-opted by AI applications. Um, and I think that that, uh, that was a wise, uh, a wise comment there. I think, um, I think the term agent has a little bit been skating to where the puck is going, not necessarily where the puck is, but we might be fighting an uphill battle there just because of the lack of understandability and having to explain it every time may not be worth it. And it might be worth having that conversation later as people are familiar enough with wallets that they understand perhaps the difference and then, and then not really worry about that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm distracted for a second there, Sam. But yeah, you you basically summarized and hit the nail on the head in regards to my comment. So thank you. Um, Helen, you you pasted the link to the to the uh, Hyperledger announcement for Aries. Is there anything you want to draw out from there in particular? Yeah, well, you know, I just popped it in there just for us to remember kind of where Aries came from and what the initial goal was. I mean, I, I appreciate Alex's um, thoughts on adoption of the tech because I think that's <clears throat> incredibly important. I also think it's incredibly important to represent what this project can do to the developers and the companies and the maintainers and contributors of this project. Like if they see Aries as just a wallet, Will they bypass all the other stuff that's, you know, has been made possible by the development of this project? I mean, a lot of the things, you know, weren't just a twinkle in the eye when, when, when that that Aries has now. Then, you know, when we announced it, and I think that, um, yeah, just taking a look at where we came from and what the, you know, the goal is of the project. Um, you know, we talked about this on the last call. Do we need to update what the goals of this project are? Um, do we need to clarify or, or modify some of these descriptions that are in this blog and in, in, in new channels? Um, but there's so much here that's, <laughs> you know, at, from a non-technical, you know, from a layman's eye, it's, you know, there's so much here that's not wallet stuff. And I would hate for it to get buried or lost or not supported or not, um, you know, kind of on that that trajectory of, of growth um, and development if, you know, we were to paint, you know, try to paint more broad strokes than maybe is appropriate. Thanks, Helen. Ken, your hand is up. Yeah, I wanted to draw out the thought that uh, not all um, all agents or wallets are representing people. Some of them do, but some of them represent the the, the cloud agents, for instance, that might represent a government or a business or a small business or enterprise um do they want to have their you know the the government um the government wallet or is it a government agent that represents them so looking at it not to ignore the the individual aspect and the privacy preservation and so forth but there are also businesses and governments and other uh, organizations that might be represented as well thanks ken alex yeah, just in support of what Helen said, um, agreed. Uh, my my suggestion is not in the context of what Aries is and how we describe it, but specifically about wallet versus agents and how we communicate up the chain and make that an approachable concept. So for Aries, yeah, completely agree. There's much more to it. And that's, I think that's a fascinating part is, is picking those elements out and being able to communicate out in an approachable way what makes this work special in all its facets. So completely agree on that. One of the things that's showing up in my brain here is that even if we don't use different terms, we might change how we convey them to people. Like, for example, if someone says, well, what's an agent? You can say, well, it's a smart wallet or it's a wallet with extras or uh, things like that, which I think would be which would be really interesting. Uh, keep it coming, guys. This is great. I mean, you can use Aries to build a quote unquote wallet, 
thought you need all the other capabilities to be able to make to bring that alive, right? Like so, issuing and verifying and holding as an organization, uh, supporting different protocols and credential formats for different use cases. Hmm. Like it's it's the it's the web of interactions. You don't have enough words in English. It's the problem. I feel like we don't have enough words to mean snow, but in the right ways to talk about this concept. Mm -hmm. uh, Warren. Yeah, I think you know, the the terms that we use are are important, but I think also the context in which we use them um, matters too. I like, you know, we we tend to think about I think uh, a wallet as something which is a way of managing our keys as well as a way of managing our you know the storage of our credentials and those are actually two separate you know functions right so there's key management and there's credential storage management and then agents which represent the you know um, rich interactions some of which involve that the key stores and the and the credential stores um but from a popular perspective um, or a broad perspective, I think that, you know, using the term wallet and overloading it is okay, right? Depending on the, on the perspective. And, you know, going back to the, I thought the summary that you made, uh, I'm sorry, I've forgotten who made the original comment, but you summarized quite well about not treating a web browser as like a, a TLS, um, you know, negotiation thing. That's not how we think of it. It just happens to be an artifact of, of what a web browser does. And similarly, it has a notion, which again, users don't know about called a user agent. <laughs> it is an agent, but that's not how people talk about it uh, from a, like a, a high level abstraction perspective. And so I think it's very dependent on the, on the context. And I think that, um, that we need to be cognizant of that and, and, at a, again, at a technical level, I think we can be a little bit more precise. You know, there are words that we can use that describe, okay, we've got, we've got key management, we've got credential management, we've got protocols for interaction. And, you know, sometimes we group those things together and call them wall, but it's not precise and that's okay. In, well, as a company, no. Thank you, Warren. Uh, Steve, you're next. Yeah, no, this is an interesting discussion. I was um, contemplating Mike's um, comments about AIs and wallets. Back in the day when I was, as a kid, I'd call in the radio station and I'd try to win a free vinyl record. So that'll tell you how old I am. Um, meaning um, I'm a kid today. The right? cool kids are doing it today too, Steve. <laughs> you're, you're, you're fine. That's right. Um, so what the purpose of my call was not to give them my identity. It was, it was not to make a call per se. My purpose was to get an album. Um, so um, I, can, I can see that, you know, combining, looking at combining AIs and wallets, my purpose may be today to tell my AI, when the tickets are on sale, be first in line and get me one. And so the purpose, if you look at the purpose of whatever application that might become, it's not so much identity, it's not so much connection, it's the combination of all those things. And I think as we, as we start to look at what's a wallet, what's an agent, and, and those broader terms, I, I think we're going to find additional connection points that make what we're building um, we're we're going to be able to let other developers and designers see what we're doing in a different light and be attracted to it more. Thank you, Steve. I mean, it's you know when we're it's communicating to different audiences. So you know, like back how I structure my talks, I talk about why. So. What are the symptoms we're experiencing as people, as organizations building systems? 
know we're experiencing, you know, uh, theft and phishing and spam and counterfeiting, like as individuals, we all relate to that. Building complex systems that interact with many different organizations is an N squared problem. So that's hard. So what, what do we want to do? What do we, what do we want to do? So we want to have these confidential, you know, protocol-based interactions. And then, and then how do we do that? That's what Steve was just talking about here, the, the building blocks. But the point being that it's, what can I do? Like, I don't, you know, people think about what's the task I'm trying to accomplish, and then they open the app or they go to the service. So we can expand what the wallet does as we have people using them to accomplish the task they need to do. Uh, thank you. I, uh, I've heard something that I didn't anticipate here today. Uh, I think I've heard that being precise about the term is it nearly as important as we think it is? And that if it helps people understand, if we use different terms in different contexts, maybe in business contexts, we tend to lean into agent because it's what they they say as a starter or is what they think about from an organization perspective. But from a personal perspective, we tend to start from wallets because that's where uh, people uh, come from. Then, then that's okay. And then what we get to then explain is what the overloading or the extras or the smartness actually comes from as part of our project. And, and I, think that, uh, I think that if we uh, attempt to explain it in that way, it can make it more approachable, but also highlight the differences between, for example, an application built on Aries that has the ability to use the question answer, answer protocol and basic message and other non-wallety type of protocols um, can can help differentiate, for example, between something that we're building and something that is strictly a crypto wallet, for example, who, whose you know goal is is cryptocurrency management. Um, and so uh, that's uh, anyway the the whole the whole uh, lack of precision might be good thing is actually something that I, did, I didn't expect to hear today, but I find super insightful. Um, we have like three minutes left. Any any sort of closing thoughts or realizations that others want to share? Alex. Just a quick one, Sam. I think completely agree. And that's all that's not to negate the the, the the importance at a technical level of that precision. Like within our community, within our discussions, we need that precision in order to execute on some of these beautiful ideas. But not but. And as a question of adoption, when there's all this work happening worldwide, when there's about to become a de facto standard through whatever means. It's about understanding and it's about, I don't think people aim necessarily this way or that we should, but a good enough solution that's in enough places often wins. And history's, you know, got many examples of when the best technical solution didn't win out because it didn't have the traction for any number of good reasons. So I'm really curious always in, from what I can bring to it is, which is it, it, it builds on top of that beautiful technical precision, but then it makes it approachable, makes it understandable, makes it tied to real things people are trying to solve now. And then it expands once that, once that, that critical mass, the tipping point has been reached, the other parts can be realized as well, but none of it can be realized with all the great intention in the world if something else wins out in the meantime, because it answers the problems now and is understandable now. I think it's an ongoing, I think it's a really good tension, but it's one to explore further. Uh, I appreciate that. We have about one minute left. Um, we haven't, I haven't heard anything today from Timo. Uh, can I, can I, uh, um, can I bother you for a, for a quick thought about uh, how you think of all this? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm not as, as clear today, so I, I haven't uh, <laughs> shared my opinion, but um I think it makes sense. I think especially the last thing you said on um, uh, like that the term doesn't really matter um, and that overloading is okay. I think that that makes a lot of sense. So that maybe the discussion isn't as important as we portray it to be. 
I think oh. Alex and I think the gentleman at the beginning that pointed out that you can build things with Aries now. You can deliver stuff now. The other stuff is later. Right, and that that's okay, and, and that people aren't going to be bothered by the fact that like suddenly we might be you know describing things with a different term or adding smart to it or something is is, is not that much of an issue. So, um, thank you. Um, uh, I apologize for spring that on you, Timo, uh, but I appreciate it. Um, and uh, we didn't hear from others. I I'm, I'm a little bit bummed we're out of time, but um, I very much appreciate the conversation today, and uh, it's it's helped me understand a lot. Um, these conversations are sometimes a little squishy because they're not very technical, um, but I think they're they're overall very useful. And so I appreciate everyone being here. I hope your week is a great one. And please uh, speak up in the channels or, or in other things or in, in topics in future meetings, um, and we can get things discussed that you think are important. Um, I uh, very much appreciate everyone's involvement, and I hope you have a great week. Thanks for your hosting, Sam. Thanks. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, folks. Thanks, Barton.